Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to my fellow friends and our lecturer Puan Arfano. Today, me, myself, Solia and my group members are going to present you about determine the role of Audit Oversight Board, provide the discussion on the nature of corporate governance, determine the auditor's responsibilities and examine the issues related to financial reporting. Before we begin our presentation, allow me to introduce mine. My name is Siti Zulia Binti Muhammad Kasari and my registration number is 018190120. The Audit Oversight Board was established under the Securities Commission in 1993 to promote and develop an effective audit oversight framework and to promote confidence in the quality and reliability of audited financial statements in Malaysia. Part 3A of the C. SCA provides that the AOB in existing the Security Commission Malaysia in discharging its audit oversight function is responsible for it is responsible for number one is implementing policies and programs in ensuring an effective audit oversight system in Malaysia. Number two, registering auditors of public interest entities. Number three, directing the MIA to establish or, or adopt or by way of both the auditing and ethical standard to be applied by registered auditors. Number four, conducting inspection and monitoring programs on registered auditors to assess the degree of compliance of auditing and ethical standards. And the last one is cooperation and liaising with relevant authorities and relevant oversight bodies in Malaysia and internationally. That's all for me. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all my fellow friends and our lecturer Pan Arfahno. Thank you Siti Soleha. Before I start my presentation, now let me introduce myself first. My name is Nur Atiyah binti Muhammad Siti Kamal and my message number is 01-819-F1008. Today, I would like to present about provide the discussion on the nature of corporate governance. First, let me define you about the corporate governance. Corporate governance is a system of law and sounds a process by which corporations are directed and consoling focusing on the internal and external corporate structure with the intention of monitoring the actions of management and directors and thereby mitigating agency risk, which may stem from the mistakes of corporate officers. Next, I will explain about the purpose of corporate governance practice. We have three purposes. First, the purpose is to ensure all the shareholders fully exercise their rights. Second, to ensure that the organization fully recognize their, show, their shareholders' rights. And third, to ensure trustworthy, moral and ethical environment. After that, we will discuss about the nature of corporate governance. First, ensures corporate success and economic growth. Second, lowers the capital cost. And lastly, give the positive impact on the share price. Now, let's move on to the next point which are 5 elements of corporate governance. First, we have accountability. Second, is transparency. Third, is regulatory framework. Fourth, is administrative structure and lastly we have business ethic and social responsibility. Furthermore, I would like to talk about Malaysian Code on Corporate Governance. Malaysian Code on Corporate Governance was developed in 2000 and approved by High Level Finance Committee on Corporate Governance. Next, Malaysian Code on Corporate Governance sets out principles and best practice on structure and process that companies may use in their operations. 
Finally, I would like to tell you about the principle of corporate governance. The principle of corporate governance is should protect shareholder right, ensuring fair treatment to all shareholder, particularly minority and foreign shareholders. Next, the principle of corporate governance is should ensure that timely accurate is made available in all material matters. That's all from me now. Let me call Mr. Sri to continue our presentation. Thank you. I'm Mr. Sri Pubalan and my matrix card number is 01D819F1016. So today I'm going to explain about the auditor's responsibility in corporate governance. Auditor's responsibility in corporate governance can be split into two categories. One is general auditor's responsibilities and another one is relating to fraud. According to ISC 200, an auditor's responsibility is to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statements that taken as a whole are free from material misstatements, whether caused by fraud or error. Because of the nature of audit evidence and the characteristics of fraud, the auditor is able to obtain reasonable but not absolute assurance that material misstatements are detected. The auditor has no responsibility to plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable assurance that misstatements, whether caused by errors or fraud that are not material to the financial statements, are detected. The responsibility of auditor is error versus fraud. Error can be defined as unintentional misstatement while fraud is intentional misstatement. So it is the auditor's responsibility to identify and differentiate between the two. This is because any action taken by the auditor to correct these statements and the types of opinion issued shall depend heavily on the type of misstatement. Before I explain further on the error versus fraud, I would like to explain about professional skepticism. According to ISC 200, an attitude that includes a questioning mind, being alert to conditions which may indicate possible misstatements due to error or fraud and a critical assessment of audit evidence. With this in mind, an auditor shall plan and perform an audit with professional skepticism, recognizing that circumstances may exist that cause the financial statements to be materially misstated. Like I mentioned before, I would like to explain further on error versus fraud. Misstatements found in the financial statement can arise from either fraud or error. The distinguishing factor between fraud and error is whether the underlying action that results in the misstatement of the financial statement is intentional or unintentional. Like I said before, the error can be defined as unintentional misstatement while fraud is intentional misstatement. Auditor's responsibilities relating to fraud can be seen in IS1840. The auditor's responsibilities relating to fraud is an audit of financial statements highlights that the primary responsibility for the prevention and detection of fraud rests with both those charged with governance of the entity and the management. It can be found in the e-book that our actually sent us in the page 166. The auditor's responsibility is to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement of the financial statements due to fraud. At the assessment level, this is further subdivided into inherent risk and control risk. Inherent risk is the susceptibility of an assertion to misstatement because of error or fraud. Before considering controls, control risk is the risk of misstatement that will not be prevented or detected by a reporting entity's internal controls. At the financial statement level, relates to the financial statement as a whole. This risk is more likely when there is a possibility of fraud. I would like to add in some points. The audit procedure that are necessary to address the assess fraud risk depends upon the types of risk and relevant assertion that might be affected. If the auditor identifies the deficiencies in controls that are intended to address assessed fraud risk. One of the examples for planned audit procedures that may be modified to address assessed fraud risk is changing the nature of audit procedures to obtain evidence that is more reliable or to obtain additional corroborative information. 
Another example is changing the timing of audit procedure to be closer to the end of period or to point during the period in which fraudulent transactions are more likely to occur. The auditor should perform audit procedure to specifically address the risk of management override of controls, including examining journal entries, reviewing and counting estimates for biases that could result in material misstatements due to fraud. The responsibility of auditor includes to respond appropriately to fraud or suspected fraud identified during the audit. Procedures that are necessary to address the assess fraud risk depend upon the type of risk and the relevant assertion that might be affected. The auditors should perform audit procedures to specifically address the risk of management override of controls. I think that's all from me. Prasanna Devi will continue our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sri. Hello, Panarafa and my dear friends. My name is Prasanna Devi, Doctor of K. Parmisami, and my registration number is 01DAT19F1014. I will continue this presentation by presenting you the issues related to the financial reporting. As you can see the slide, there are five issues that are related to the financial reporting. Fair value measurement, government assistance and income tax, impairment assessment, going concern and liquidity, and contract modification. First thing first, we will look at the fair value measurements. Any changes on the basis of measurements, it directly and indirectly affects to the financial statement and performance of the organization and almost every user of the society. Companies are required to measure some of their assets and liabilities at fair value. This is a date specific exit price estimate based on assumption that market participant would make under current condition. When making assessment and judgments for measuring fair value, the company should consider the condition and corresponding assumptions that were known or knowable to market participant. I would like to relate the current situation we are facing now which is COVID-19 pandemic. The fair value measurement impact would depend on the evaluation of whether the severity of the COVID-19 outbreak at the reporting date would have impacted a participant's valuation assumption at that time. Companies will also need to consider um, making related disclosure that could reasonably uh, be expected to influence decision that the users of general purpose financial statements uh, would make on the basis of those financial statements. Disclosure may need to be enable users to understand whether or not the COVID-19 outbreak has been considered for the purpose of fair value measurement. Users should understand the basis for selecting the assumption and inputs that were used and the related sensi sensibilities. The next issue is government assistance and income tax. I will still use the COVID-19 outbreak as my reference. Governments has, have introduced assistance uh, measures for certain businesses as part of border economic stimulus package pa packages in response to the coronavirus outbreak. The following measures are included in these measures, which is direct subsidies, tax deduction and credits, low 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 interest loans and rental deduction or deferral deferrals this will have this will all have an impact on finance financial reporting relief measures 
may fall within the scope of the standards on income tax on government grants on leases or financial instruments and the accounting may may be different in each cases one important factor to consider when accounting uh, for any income tax consequences is uh, whether the government concern has substa substantively enacted the relevant law the character the characteristic of any tax relief or rebates need to be accessed to determine whether they should be accounted for as a reduction to income tax expenses or the receipt of a government grant in addition in payment assessment is also one of the issue related to the financial reporting as we all know an asset is impaired when a company is not able to recover its carrying amount either by selling it or using it when assessing impairment companies are required to determine the recoverable amount of the asset this calculation requires an estimate of of expected future cash flows and expectation of <clears throat> about variation in cash flow the forecast the forecast cash flow should reflect management best estimate best estimate of the economic condition that will exist over the remaining useful life of the asset with the current situation significant challenges are expected as to as to whether the forecast of budget for future cash flow can be supported can be supported by subsequent performance the more the more the current environment is uncertain the the more important it is for the company to provide detailed detailed disclosure of the assumption taken the evidence on which uh, on which they 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 are based and the impact of a change in key assumption furthermore the main issue related to the financial financial reporting is going concern and liquidity an assessment of going concern is integral to the preparation of financial statement and 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 the audit of them in both cases the assessment will normally involve involve and uh, and an estimate of the value of assets and liabilities um including uh, contingent uh, liabilities cash flows and material risk to the business um when the management prepare the financial statement management has to uh, has to make an assessment of a company's ability to uh, to continue as going concern and whether the uh, whether the going concern assumption is appropriate for instance in the current circumstances which i said uh, earlier a uh, covid-19 outbreak the management will need to consider the existing and the anticipated effects uh, of the coronavirus outbreak uh, on activities in it assessment uh, given the unpredictability of the potential impact there may uh there may be material uncertainties that cast doubt in the in uh, i mean uh, cast doubt on on the company's ability to operate under the going concern basis 
if the company nevertheless prepare the financial statement under this assumption it must disclose these uncertainties significant judgment and continual updates to the assessment uh, may uh, may be required given the evolving nature of the coronavirus outbreak last but not least we have contract modification issue which related to the financial reporting preparing financial statement of of accounting for contract modification uh, for contract modification requires time of effort and meticulous attention for detail in companies affected by covid-19 outbreak may uh, uh, may experience cash flow challenges as a result of disrupted operation higher operating costs or lost revenues they may need to obtain additional financing uh, amend the term of debt agreements or obtain waivers if they no longer satisfy debt covenants in such cases they will need to consider whether uh, uh, whether any changes to existing contractual arrangements represents a sub substantial substantial modification or potentially a contract extinguishment there are also consequences for lenders financial institutions financial institutions such as insurance companies and banks are being asked for help borrowers by by providing relief on cash flow obligations this will be considered contract modification and will require institution to think about the measurements on their loan pro pro portfolio and expected credit losses